Day seven of 100 Days of Code. You've made it to a week. Well done, you. We've learned all about inputs, variables, printing to the console, and if statements, elifs, and elses. We've got a whole bag of tricks now that allow us to build something really cool and really unique. But there's one more cherry on top. The concept of nesting, where we put an if within an if and ask follow-up questions. This is how we crack it, everyone. This is how we build the ultimate program. So far, we've built programs with if statements, and the code we wanted to run as part of that if goes underneath the colon and is always indented at least one place further than the if statement. We're gonna use the magic of indents to put an if within an if and ask a follow-up question to one we've already asked. Okay, so here we have a very simple program which asks our user what their favorite TV program is and give us some opinions. Now let's assume that we want to go a little bit more in depth with some of those questions. Now, I have a very small child who is obsessed with Peppa Pig, so if somebody says to me that Peppa Pig is their favorite TV program, I want to prod and ask a few more questions. So let's follow up with a question. I'm going to make some room inside the if statement itself where the code needs to go. Remember, that needs to be indented underneath that if statement. And I'm going to ask another question and store the result in a variable. With this done, the program is going to ask who the user's favorite character is, only if they've said their favorite TV show is Peppa Pig. I'm going to put another if statement in now to deal with that. When I start typing the code that should run on this if statement, it's indented again. So we actually have two indents in front of it. If I'm putting an else that should be linked to this if statement, it does need to be in line with this if statement. So this is where these lines that we've been seeing appearing down the side of the page come in really useful. The lines, the little thin lines after each if statement shows how far that if statement actually goes. The line that goes straight down from line two to line eight is everything that is involved in that code. Whereas the lines coming from line five to seven show that it only executes line six if the question in line five is proved to be true. Let's test it out to see how it's actually going to work. So let's start by saying any other TV show. We got to the else criteria. Okay, let's try Paw Patrol. The first elif picked that up then and gave us the second statement. But let's try the one we've been waiting for, Peppa Pig. You'll see that the code execution has gone now into the second if statement. It's asking us for our next data entry point. So let's say the only correct answer and say that Daddy Pig is our favorite character and we get the correct part of that if statement accessed. Now, what I'd like you to do is pause me for a second, go and get this code, copy it, test it out, and then extend it so that you change it to TV shows that you like and you ask follow-up questions that are meaningful to you. Change at least one of these questions, expand upon it, and take some time to do that before you get to the challenge. How about your common errors then? Well, if you're remembering your indentation correctly, there's not a lot that can go wrong here that we haven't looked at before, but there is one common problem, and that's when you're getting to an if and an else within an if, this can go wrong. Now we're getting our invalid syntax message this time on line nine by the elif. So let's take a look at that, and hopefully you can see that it's not actually that line that's causing the problem. What's happened is, that line seven and eight, which is just above it, is indented incorrectly. Look at where that else matches up to. That else on line seven is in line with the if on line two. That means that's what it's connected to. That's what it is the else for, not what we were trying, which was the else for lines five and six. So we'll fix that by highlighting both lines and pressing the tab key to indent both those lines at the same time once more. You'll see now the else is indented the same as the if statement on line five, meaning that it's connected to that. And the program works as we'd expect it to. As you go through nesting, you'll get more and more used to if statements, 
elifs and elses and how putting one construct in another can cause confusion. It's also worth at this point noting that you can have an if statement in an if statement in an if statement in an if statement and so on and so on and so on. You can put as many of these bad boys in each other as you want to get the flow of your program working correctly. Once again, if you fancy an extra challenge, I've provided some broken code that you can try and fix. Okay, your challenge for today. We've all admitted to liking something in public and started questioning us at length to check that we're the real deal. That we're not fake gamer boys or fake anime fans. Well, you're going to create a program that does just that for something that you're interested in. Let's write a program that asks what somebody's interested in and uses nested ifs to ask a bunch of really annoying, awkward follow-up questions. Let's see if we can decisively, once and for all, express if that person is a fake fan of the subject they're interested in. Don't forget to share it in the community, on social media, and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to advertise your fantastic program. You're a week in now, what you're building is meaningful and exciting. So make sure you share it and get some feedback. That's it for day seven. Tomorrow is the second big project you'll be able to tackle. Come back to build your own custom affirmations or insult generator. Thank you.